Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Word tables can perform simple mathematical functions on data contained within their tables, much like a spreadsheet can. In addition, Word can use data from a linked Excel spreadsheet if your calculations require more processing capability than Word can supply. In order to create a Word table that contains cells that will add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers, you must insert formulas into the cells where you want to display the answers to the mathematical operations that are performed. Formulas perform calculations on the values of cells in a table. Formulas always start with an equal sign to signify to Word that they're not regular text. Formulas consist of cell addresses from which they gather the information used in the calculations. These cell addresses can then be linked together with operators, like the plus sign, the minus sign, the multiplication sign, and the division sign, amongst others. You can also perform functions, like sum, on a range of cells in a table. So a formula might be expressed as equal sum, and then in parentheses, above, which would add the values of all cells above the cell where you had inserted this formula. So what is a cell address? Well, it's simply a way of referring to a cell. A cell address is the relative location of a cell in a table. Imagine that there are letters at the top of each column, starting with A at the far left, and then continuing to increase one letter at a time to the right. In addition, imagine that each row has a number assigned to it, with the topmost row being row 1. The row numbering then continues downward, increasing by 1 for each new row. The cell address is the column letter followed by the row number. For example, the top left cell is always cell A1. B1 is always to the right of A1. So here's a table with the cell addresses entered into the appropriate cells in order to assist you in seeing the pattern. As stated previously, a cell formula begins with an equal sign and is often followed by the cell addresses of the cells upon which you want to perform the mathematical operations joined together by standard mathematical operators. So for instance, if you wanted to add the cells above cell A5 and then display the results of the summary operation in cell A5, you would begin by clicking into cell A5. You would then insert a formula that would look like either equals A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 or equals sum above. So instead of displaying the formula itself within the cell, the cell will display the answer. Why? Because when you insert a formula into a cell, it cues Word to display the answer to the formula instead of the actual formula itself. Formulas display their results by default, not their actual contents. Now we will examine how to insert a formula into a table cell. First you should click into the table cell where you want the answer to be displayed. This is often the cell that is at the end of a continuous column or row of numbers. Next, click the Layout tab of the Table Tools contextual tab in the ribbon. Then click the Formula button that appears within the data group. That will open the Formula dialog box. This dialog box is where you actually enter the formula that will then be inserted into the table cell as a calculated data field. Note that when the formula dialog box opens, Word will try to guess what function it is that you want to perform. For example, if you enter a formula into a cell at the end of a column of continuous numbers, Word assumes that you probably want to add the values of the cells in the column above the current cell. Therefore, Word enters the formula of equal sum above as the default formula shown in the formula dialog box that appears. Now, if Word's suggestion is the correct formula, then simply click the OK button at the bottom of the formula dialog box to accept it and insert the formula field into the cell. If it is not correct, then click into the formula text box and enter the correct formula. Now after you have entered the desired calculation into the formula text box, you can then use the number format dropdown to select a pattern for the display of the number. This is often useful when you want the result to have a specific format, such as returning a number that is formatted as currency, or as a percentage, for example. 
Note that in Word, you can use the terms left, right, above, and below to refer to the adjacent cells in the row or column to the left of, to the right of, above, or below the current cell. This is simply a more convenient way of indicating the range of cells upon which you want the function to be performed. You can also designate a cell range by typing the cell addresses of the upper left cell in the range of cells upon which you want to perform the function, followed by a colon symbol, and then followed by the cell address of the lower right cell in the range of cells upon which you want to perform the function. So for example, you could type equal sum a1 colon a4 into the formula text box in order to add the contents of the cells a1 through a4. But what about the word sum? Well, if you're only trying to perform one mathematical operation on a range of cells, you can use functions like sum, average, max, min, and others in your formula instead of writing all of the cell addresses and mathematical operations individually. Word provides you with many standard functions that are shown in the paste function dropdown. Selecting any function from this list of functions shown in the dropdown menu will add it into the formula shown in the formula box. Now once you have the word formula created, you can simply click the OK button to insert the formula field into the selected cell. The results of the formula will then be shown in the cell. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.